Hey, it's Jordan. I am in Detroit, and we're in a pretty uh, special place, uh, the King Solomon. Historical. Historical King Solomon Church. Could you, you told me before uh, this was where Malcolm X and Martin Luther King, Martin Luther King had his first. Uh, I have a dream speech here, was done here before he went to Washington. Wow. And Malcolm X, uh, his house had got bombed the day before, and he flew out to come here the next day and mm -hmm. to give the uh, message to the grassroots. Wow, know. so pretty, yes. uh, Very pretty historic. special place. Yes, where all of the UAW people used to work. You used to come here if you wanted a job in the plants because the pastors in, at that time here in Detroit were very instrumental in getting workers to go into Ford, Chrysler, General Motors, and wow. all of that, yes. So how does this connect then to the, uh, the presidential election? Because, you know, Trump came here the other day and like basically crapped on Detroit. He which... wasn't lying, honey. He told the truth. Tell I me mean... more, because if you don't know, Trump came here and he warned that, you know, <laughs> if Kamala to. Harris gets elected, then America is going to be Detroit, you well, say. Well, in Detroit, we know what's happening here. We know that we get overtaxed on property. We know, but, and from that, a lot of people have moved out. I live on a street called Phillip. It's every, five people on my block for houses live. All of the rest of it is the just a field. Mm -hmm. Yes, but if you ride around the city of Detroit, I ride around the city of Detroit a lot because, you know, I have family and friends and other meetings and different places I go. And the places that I go now, it's it looked like a war zone where families live. You know, you yeah. took the jobs away from us. If you take the jobs and the schools, who's going to stay? You know, I, re <laughs> I remember uh, one of the first times I went to Flint, and mm -hmm. Flint and Detroit are very similar. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought I was driving through a forest. You yes. did. It was just empty lots. The grass was up to here mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of abandoned homes. Yes. And you don't have a lot of money a lot of times to c keep your own property clean because the jobs you, you, you know are not, not here. And people say, oh, they can keep their jobs. I said, listen, you don't know those people's situation, so don't knock them. You know, I know the, how Detroit used to be. I was just telling, we all grew up in the same neighborhood. I'm the youngest. So anyway, <laughs> but they. Uh, you, all, you all seem about 40. <laughs> really? That's yeah. a good thing. Mm. <laughs> So we know how neighborhoods were. The children growing up now, they could, they will never know how a neighborhood or community was. Right, where we had a where village. Where we had, we had, we really had a village where we grew up. So, you know, I could go where, I, I, my, both of my grandparents lived in the community that I grew up. So I could go over that grandmother, granddad, it was my granddad, my grandmother's passed when I was young. So I could go to this granddad, I could go to that granddad, I could go to cousins and aunties and uncles, you know, now, I, my, everybody is so far away, you can't even get the bus to their house because the buses don't run that often. I'm actually going to be talking to Brother Cunningham because transportation's a big problem here. The oh, buses he's in don't the come on time. He was. Which oh, he was? Yeah. Let me see. I think he's yeah, out. He might, he might yeah. be out now. Yeah, because he, he, you talking about the Cunningham who has. Uh, he he rides people out. around. Yeah, yeah yes. Uh -huh. He is. We had a guy, let me tell you about it. He worked with us with, uh, what's our man's name, who just passed? They, they, we said they killed him. He had two tethers on. Mm. Bob, Bob Carmack. Carmack. Yeah. Bob, Carmack. Bob Carmack, if you ever knew Bob Carmack, he was a people's person. They had taken his property from mm. him down. I guess this was like on the waterfront or something. Mm. But Bob Carmack was very instrumental in trying to get the media's attention on what was going on in the city of Detroit, trying to expose Duggan and his shenanigans. shenanigans. Right. So he hired a helicopter one time <laughs> to fly across uh, Tiger Stadium and ask the lady who he said he didn't know to marry him mm. while he was married. <laughs> mm. Sure, his wife liked that. <laughs> and so then he claimed, so because he said he didn't know the lady. Okay, then they find pictures with him, not actually with the lady, but showing them in the same vicinity. So then Carmack got the, uh, he got a truck or a van, and you know one of them TV monitors? He followed the mayor to her house, well, their house or whoever, and he had the key. And he went in to the house, but he said he didn't know the woman. So that kind of exposed it. Gotcha. Since he said he lived here, 
but you got a key to somebody else's house. Right. You, you know, so that was a lot of, so, but Bob, Car that's, that's another person, Bob Carmex passed uh, a few months ago. He was going to city council, he was going everywhere, but they put two tethers on him saying that he had been drunk, drink, drunk driving. But how long do you keep him on there? For two years? Wow. And they, it, the key wasn't even in their ignition. So they said it was attempting to drive. <laughs> now let me ask you, because a lot of the audience would say, all right, if all this stuff is happening under Democrats, then, I mean, I'm not saying vote for Trump, but why, you got the Kamala signs here. Do you think Kamala is going to improve the situation no, here? No, how? They not. Listen, she in there right now. Okay, whatever you can do in the last how many days they have, because they have uh, what do you call it? A, uh, what you call it? Executive when they, order, order or, right? So what can she if, do if, now to stop? What's yeah, going you on? you can do something with the exists. Like you can release people out of uh, prison at the end of your yeah. term. You can have some kind of executive power to mm -hmm. do something. We've been overtaxed. Give us our money back. I don't know how that would work, but it's something that. But what I know one thing they can do is they are in charge of the federal budget, right? Absolutely. So the federal minimum wage is ten dollars an hour. Federal minimum wage is seven twenty-five. I thought it was seven twenty-five. Oh, when so I look, the federal workers don't make ten dollars. Uh, federal government workers, right? Though, but the okay. federal minimum right. wage, right? But the federal is government workers, you can raise that to fifteen right now. Mm -hmm. That's that's one. That's my ask. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if it's what, what happened. Well, we know Biden ran on raising fifteen dollars, raising it to fifteen, and then right away they kind of didn't fight. That's on that. correct. Now I, 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 that's what I started out doing uh, in the union was to fight for fifteen, um, and it took a lot of work to even get people to talk about raising anything, you know, other than seven twenty-five. So when, as we were going out, people were saying, "Oh, I'm not going to pay any." Our, uh, workers to fifteen dollars an hour at McDonald's. I'm like, well, McDonald's is a sixty or seventy billion dollar corporation, mm -hmm. and if I have to foot the bills for their workers, because they have a resource center to teach their workers how to apply for a uh, housing, uh, med uh, medical assistance, mm -hmm. you know, and food assistance. So why should we have to foot the bill for McDonald's? Same when they with, have enough money to same pay. Same thing with Amazon workers. At Walmart, mm -hmm. yes. You yeah. know, so yeah. Mm -mm. I mean, in Michigan, if, if you're going to win, whether you're president, uh, Senate, Congress, uh, who, whatever office, you got to do good if you're a Democrat in Detroit, Wayne County. Uh, and right now, I'm hearing different things. I'm hearing <laughs> black men in particular seem to be moving over in some numbers to Trump. And I'm hearing a lot of people are kind of just done with both parties. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, because it, it, it appears that the corporation is running both parties, so uh, I don't know. I'm just, but I do feel that under the Democrats, we are seeing more or less representative. We got more poverty. We got more crime and drug-inflicted communities. Our schools are being raped. <laughs> Children are being pimped. Uh, it's, it's sad, you know. So do you feel that in a way it's not necessarily you think Republicans would be much better, but if this is happening under Democrats, then people either don't vote Where, or, right. or do do? just say. How do you get independent enough to wake up the people to start a party that's going to work for the people and not the corporations? Because right now, to me, they the same bird, the same feather, the same plane. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the right, the left, but the same bird. And have you seen media um, report on the other options, you know, the third party candidates like Jill Stein, uh, mm -hmm. who talks about a lot of these things? You don't really hear that there are other options in the media. All right. Well, that's because they are not, um, they don't get it out on the stations that people mostly right. look at, you mm -hmm. know, so I don't, I don't, I don't know, you, you know, I, I just feel sometimes that I'm in a no-win situation, right. you know, but it, I know that it's, it's not going, it's not going to get any better under the Democrats, because we've been had them better. for, I know, 20 something years. And I haven't seen anything. I, I lived through right to work. I don't live through the riot. I don't live through all of the police brutality in the city of Detroit. And all of this was under Democrats, mm -hmm. you know. So. So are you feeling for yourself that you would consider Trump, or? I would consider, and I would do. I voted uh, Libertarian, you know, 
you know. So I know on this election we can pick and choose because this is the general. You can you don't have to do straight party. Right. You can go, you know, uh, libertarian. You can go Democrat, Republican. So I think that is good. So sometimes I have voted in for Republicans before. I've helped Republican judges, you know, and they've been doing a great job. I, mm -hmm. I have to say, you know. Um, while they were been on the bench. Some of the Democrat judges have been doing pretty good, but they can't just do it by themselves, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And you know, to me, what it sounds like here is people just feel beaten down. And when you feel beaten down, uh, you're not gonna go rah, rah, if mm -mm. the Democrats offer yeah. you, <laughs> you know, tax credits or, or a lot of the things being Talking offered are- school or, or, reimbursement. I paid my school loan off, so. <laughs> and if you have the choice of the lesser evil, to me, evil is evil. Right. <laughs> so what, what, you're gonna like this poison, it's a little stronger than the other poison? <laughs> right. Really? That's our choice now? And you said at the beginning that you two disagree, so uh, are you on their wavelength in terms of not, not feeling so strong about voting for uh, <clears throat> Harris? Only because Donald Trump is really an asshole. <laughs> I agree. I That's grew up in New York. <laughs> hey, I'm really quiet and low key. You know, I she take is. everything in, but the main goal for the next 30 days or however many days is to get the vote out and vote correctly. Because many are saying they're voting for neither one, they're going to mm. vote uncommitted. Mm. And, and, and Rashida it. did a good job, I'm going to tell you, to get those 100,000 people to vote uncommitted. Now, what I can say about Rashida is she is a great organizer. I met Charita, uh, I met her when she was working for Sugar Law, because I was working for SEIU at the time. And so we used to have uh, the Sugar Law people come out and, you know, look at the rallies and stuff like that, make sure we was doing everything correctly. She would come out and uh, train the people on how to act in the media and different stuff like that. So Rashida, to me, you know, a lot of people say because she is an Arabic descent, but hey, I'm African American, so if I ever get anything, they gonna be my first priority. <laughs> I'm just saying, right? <laughs> and <laughs> that's just how I am. Now, I can't say everybody else is like me, but I know that if I ever get anything or any position, the first thing I'm, because I know my people, I know what they need. So like her, she knows her people and she knows what they need. And right. that's what she Agreed. fights for. And that's right. bigger than the election. We're talking, Correct. We're talking yes. about, you know, yes. who knows, 50, 60. Some mm -hmm. numbers say 200,000 people have died in Gaza. Yes. And uh, all we're hearing from Biden and Harris is ceasefire, but, you know, they're controlling the check. Really. Right. Right. You know, if you're going to cease fire, cease fire now. And that's what I want. I don't want nobody else to die. Mm -hmm. I don't care who they are. I do not want them to die. And I, and I wonder just for you two, um, so, you know, I guess psychologic, psychologically, you've probably been canvassing and busting your butt for the last 20, 30 years for Democrats. Yeah. Yes. So yes. it must be kind of like. It's so disappointing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it's, it's like, wow, <laughs> we've been floating out there for somebody just to find out <laughs> all these details and uh, information that we didn't have at hand before. And so right. now that we had this information, you, you got to stand back and say, wow, you know, our community is not growing. It's not surviving. It's not thriving. It's, it's swindling. It's impoverished. It's crime written. It's not represented. Everywhere I go, whether it's Detroit, Flint, Cleveland, all these cities, the same pattern is there's like five to ten blocks that are amazing and beautiful. Bars, right. restaurants, cultural centers, sporting stadiums. And then you drive like ten minutes down the road and it looks like a third world country oh, in some yeah. parts. You can go to Gross Point. I live two blocks from Gross Point. On the opposite side of the street, it's very nice. You look on my side of the street, you see deers and, and stuff that are not even supposed to be here. No houses vegetation uh, that's, that, that, that dwindled away. It's horrible. Vacant land and worn torn zones. Right. Because, uh, and Gross Point is one of our very exclusive neighborhoods, mm. you know. And, and I see the work that they do in Gross Point. If someone, that water, when our basement's flooded. I mean, flooded and flooded. You know what Gross Point did? They done built them a whole new station. <laughs> With, in, in a matter of a year. Well, did you know that uh, after the Flint 
water disaster went national, the governor, Snyder at the time, he preemptively replaced all of the lead pipes in Ann Arbor. Of course. They didn't have a problem. Wow. Right. But he took out the pipes. Flint, 10 years later, they still, still have not have it. And you have to change all the pipes. People don't know. You have to change your inside your home. Mm -hmm. You got, because that corrosion went into there. So it's, even if you got outside clean pipes, it come through that corrosion, you still got, you got to change your dishwasher, your sink faucets, everything up under your sink. We were just there a couple weeks ago for my book, and people are showing me rashes now, 10 years later. I people are posting know. online brown water 10 years so later. So has, has the Democrats here done anything for them in Flint? No, they I have think you not. Just answered the question. Have the Republicans done anything for the people in Flint? No, they haven't. Don't vote for Donald Trump. <laughs> she said, "Don't vote for Donald Trump." Well, I want to touch. I, I want to touch on that because right. I don't. I don't like Donald Trump at I all. I like Donald Trump now since I met him. If you ain't never met him, you know we went to the 180 church. They didn't get in. I did. But anyway, when, I've seen him. I mean, I didn't think. Uh, that he was a radical person or talk about people because they take snippets of what he says out of what he's really trying to talk about. You know, he met with all of those uh, African-American business owners and, and, and some community people there because I had never met when I when 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 I want to know something, I go to the source. That's just me. I want to I wanted to meet him and see how he, he operate outside of what the media was portraying him. I went, I worked in New York. So when he was giving out the $200 to go, when he first started and was coming down the elevator, remember that? I, I didn't know how to get over there because I, I knew how to get on the subway, but I, 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 cause I was gonna go over there and get me that $200 mm. just to see. But I mean, you, you would hear stuff. They did Barack horrible when he, when he first ran too. They called him all kind of names, took snippets out of this and stuff. And not saying, but I know that that's how they do. Well, the problem with Trump, there's many, Trump is what this is. Okay. I mean, he got all the goodies as a developer. Well, he, he didn't, said change he didn't, the tax code. He didn't pay taxes. Change uh, the tax and code. As president, the main thing, the main thing he <laughs> uh -huh. did was give tax breaks to rich yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. But okay. I want to get on because she's saying, mm -hmm. you know, not, she's not exactly saying rah, rah, Kamala. She's right. saying she's don't vote for Trump. Why, yeah. But the problem is people are tired of this same situation of lesser of two evils. Correct. And when you have that continually lesser of two evils, people just tune out. That's why Hillary in 2016, she underperformed here because less she people did. voted. Yeah. Um, so I feel like that might be what you see, either a drop right. in voter turnout or people vote uncommitted or people mm -hmm. vote third party. And who do the Democrats yeah. have to blame if that happens other than themselves? Just don't vote for Donald Trump. <laughs> That's very important. Don't vote, for Trump. Don't, for, don't, don't vote for Donald Trump. It is time for a change and it is time for a miracle. And we just need to try something new.